What up, lovely people? This is Medicosis Perfect Sinus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biology playlist. In the previous video, we talked about the basics of the endocrine system. Today, we'll talk about the endocrine glands. What does endocrine gland mean? It's a gland that secretes its secretion directly into the bloodstream. This biology playlist is just scratching the surface. If you want to dig deeper, I have an endocrinology playlist. In the last video, we talked about the difference between nervous stimulation versus hormonal stimulation. An exocrine gland versus endocrine gland. Exocrine gland has a duct. It secretes its secretion to a nearby structure. However, an endocrine gland is ductless. It dumps the secretions into the bloodstream, which takes it into distant places. A CEO, general manager, employees, independent contractors. Hypothalamus, pituitary, glands that listen to the anterior pituitary, glands that don't care. How does the pituitary talk to the thyroid gland? TSH. How does it talk to the adrenal cortex? ACTH. How does it talk to the gonads, testicles and ovaries? LH and FSH. The vast majority of pituitary hormones are secreted from the anterior pituitary. Only two are in the posterior pituitary and as you know the posterior pituitary did not make them the hypothalamus did these two are adh and oxytocin here is an example of how the hypothalamus stimulates the anterior pituitary to stimulate the thyroid hypothalamus secretes trh which goes to the anterior pituitary to secrete tsh which goes to the thyroid to secrete thyroid hormone Hypothalamus secretes GnRH, goes to the anterior pituitary to secrete growth hormone, which goes to the liver to secrete IGF-1. If you want to inhibit growth hormone, somatostatin is your man. Next, hypothalamus secretes GnRH, which goes to the anterior pituitary to secrete LH and FSH, which goes to the gonads. In females, they are going to the ovaries to secrete estrogen, progesterone, and inhibin. In males, they are going to the testicles to secrete testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and inhibin. What does inhibin do? It inhibits. Hypothalamus secretes TRH, which goes to the anterior pituitary to secrete TSH, which goes to the thyroid to secrete thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. Hypothalamus secretes CRH, which goes to the anterior pituitary to secrete ACTH, which goes to the adrenal cortex, not medulla, cortex, to secrete cortisol and androgen. Hypothalamus secretes TRH, the same TRH as this one, to secrete prolactin from the anterior pituitary to secrete milk from the mammary glands. Hypothalamus secretes ADH and oxytocin. They are stored in the posterior pituitary. ADH wants to preserve water to raise your blood pressure. Oxytocin stimulates the breast and the uterus. It helps push the baby out and then push milk out. This was the story of the employees that listen to the pituitary. How about the independent contract? Parathyroid glands secrete parathyroid hormone. Adrenal medulla secretes catecholamines. Like what? Epinephrine or epinephrine dopamine. Pancreas secretes insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin. The Ten Commandments of Endocrinology. Pause and review. Who controls the endocrine system? Hypothalamus does. Feedback mechanisms do diurnal circadian rhythm what does that mean it means that some hormones are secreted more in the morning others are secreted more at night why do you want to secrete cortisol more in the morning because this is a stress hormone it helps me counteract stress and of course mornings are more stressful than nights because in the morning i wake up i want to go to work i drive i keep cussing at other drivers other drivers cuss at me this is stressful i need cortisol growth hormone is for growth children grow more at night you know why because at night you're sleeping you're lying down flat so the effect of gravity is negligible so it's easier for you to grow the body is smart the body wants to preserve resources how do we know that it's morning or night your brain does because the suprachiasmatic nucleus at the hypothalamus in the brain is connected to your eyes when there's lots of light the brain knows that this is morning when there is no light we know that we're sleeping what's the function of growth hormone growth what's the function of lh and fsh just to meet the gonads to make androgens and estrogens and progesterones tsh secretes thyroid hormone for metabolism this is a metabolism stimulator acth secretes cortisol and androgen from the adrenal cortex cortisol is an anti-stress hormone because it makes sugar available in your blood and you can use that sugar for energy to shoulder the stress of the drivers cussing at you 
Prolactin is pro-lactation. ADH is pro-water and pro-blood pressure. Oxytocin is pro-breast and uterus. How does growth hormone make me grow? It increases muscle mass, increases cartilage formation, increases bone formation. Growth hormone and prolactin work via the JAK-STAT pathway or the non-receptor tyrosine kinase. Insulin works by receptor tyrosine kinase. Glucagon and catecholamines like epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine work by the G-protein coupled receptor system. The fat hormones have the receptors inside the cell because they can cross the membrane. For a more detailed discussion, check out my endocrinology playlist. Estrogen helps the breast grow by making the nipple, the ducts, and increasing the breast size. Okay, but where is the acinus? Well, don't worry, the progesterone will add these acini or alveoli. Okay, but they're empty. Who's gonna fill them with milk? Prolactin well, because it's prolactation. Who's gonna push the milk out? Oxytocin. Prolactin and estrogen hate each other. Prolactin is pro-lactation but anti-ovulation. Estrogen is anti-lactation but pro-ovulation. Have you ever seen a lady who's pregnant and breastfeeding at the same moment? It is unlikely. It can happen, but it's unlikely. Why unlikely? Because when you're breastfeeding, you are in prolactin land and prolactin will inhibit ovulation so you will not get pregnant. But when you're pregnant, you are in estrogen land, pro-ovulation, but anti-lactation, so you cannot breastfeed. Of course, there are exceptions. Let's talk about FSH and LH. In females, FSH is targeting the follicle. FSH is follicle-stimulating hormone. It wants the follicle to grow and prosper until, boom, boom, we ovulate and get the ovum out of the follicle. What is FSH doing in males? It is converting something to something. And this is called aromatization from the male hormone to the female hormone, converting androgens to estrogens. It also helps make sperms and sustain sperm so that we can achieve fertilization. How about LH? In females, it makes the luteal body. Luteinizing hormone for the luteal body. The word luteal means yellow. Why do you need luteal body? Because it secretes progesterone to maintain the endometrium of the uterus to sustain the baby until the placenta appears in the second trimester of pregnancy. In men, LH stimulates the Leydig cell to convert testosterone into the even more potent dihydrotestosterone. Let's talk about males. GnRH from the hypothalamus goes to the anterior pituitary, tells the pituitary to secrete LH and FSH. FSH goes to Sertoli cell, tell the Sertoli cell, I want you to maintain and sustain the sperms, and I want you to aromatize. What does that mean? Convert testosterone into estrogen. Do men have estrogen? Yes, they have some estrogen, but they have tons of androgens. Conversely, women have tons of estrogens and progesterone and some little androgens. But how about the luteinizing hormone? Luteinizing hormone with the L goes to the Leydig cell, tells the Leydig cell to secrete testosterone, and then take that testosterone and convert it into the even more potent dihydrotestosterone. What's the name of the enzyme that converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone? 5 alpha reductase. What's the name of the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen? Aromatase. Crazy mnemonic to help you remember aromatase. Just remember that women, on average, smell better than men. Aroma, baby. And as Chef Gordon Ramsay might say, it's aromatic. F me. Here is the same slide with more colors and more pharmacology. But if you're just studying biology and you don't want to hear about this, forget it. Let's talk about the female reproductive system. I hope you remember your anatomy. Here is the menstrual cycle. We have the first half of the cycle and then boom, the LH surge followed by ovulation. And then you have the second half of the cycle. After the first half and the second half, there is bleeding, which is known as the menstrual period. Please refer to my previous biology videos on fertilization to learn more about this. Let's review it quickly. First half, who is the hero? FSH, do what? Follicle, maintain the follicle, sustain the follicle, grow the follicle until they become mature like this. That's when it comes to the anterior pituitary. But when it comes to the ovary, who is the hero in the first half? This is estrogen, baby. Estrogen feeds the uterus. The uterus is growing, 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 and growing more. Until you reach day number 14. 
because day number one is bleeding, day number 14 is ovulation. What happens? The ovum is getting released, ovulation. Get the ovum out of the follicle. How did this happen? Luteinizing hormone suddenly decided to surge. Boo, like this. Luteinizing hormone causes ovulation. And then luteinizing hormone will leave the chat. The second half of the cycle, who's the hero? Progesterone, 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 and some estrogen. What's the function of progesterone? To maintain the endometrium of the uterus to sustain the baby. Hopefully we have a zygote. Who made progesterone? The corpus luteum. What's the corpus luteum? It's the follicle after you get the ovum out. So the remainder of the follicle after ovulation is known as the luteal body. Proliferation phase, secretory phase, menstruation phase. Menstruation phase is bleeding. Why is there bleeding? Because suddenly, after the second half, estrogen is gonna drop like a rock. Progesterone is gonna drop like a rock. Who's gonna sustain the endometrium of the uterus? No one. No one is gonna sustain me. I'm gonna fall off. I'm gonna slough off. And that's the menstrual bleeding every 28 days. Let's talk about the thyroid hormone. Hypothalamus, TRH, and pituitary, TSH, thyroid gland, thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. What's the function of the thyroid hormone? It's the stove of the body. It literally fires up the metabolism, helps you burn your calories, releasing all kinds of energy. This is Sam when he was normal. This is Sam after he got hyperthyroidism. Oh, what happened? When you have hyperthyroidism, you have too much thyroid hormone. Therefore, too much fire, too much metabolism. Oh, when my metabolism is super duper fast, I am burning all of my calories and I get thin like this. Everything in my body is working like crazy. My gut is working like crazy. I have diarrhea. I feel hot. My eyes are bulging outwards. I cannot stand hot weather. I am heat intolerant. Let's talk about the adrenal cortex. First, the adrenal gland has two pieces, adrenal cortex on the outside and adrenal medulla in the core, in the inside. Who is under the influence of ACTH from the pituitary? Only the cortex. Okay, tell me more about the cortex. It has three sub-layers. The first one is the zona glomerulosa, secretes mineralocorticoids. The second one is the zona fasciculata, secretes glucocorticoids. The third one is the zona reticularis, secretes adrenal androgens. What's the function of mineralocorticoids like aldosterone? It increases two things, decreases two things in your blood. Increases salt and water, decreases potassium and hydrogen. I'll tell the kidney to keep lots of sodium and water in the body, but to dump tons of potassium and hydrogen in the urine, out of the body. What's the function of the glucocorticoids like cortisol? Oh, I'm the anti-stress hormone. I increase sugar because I wanna help you shoulder the stress of other drivers cussing at you. I increase gluconeogenesis, which means more glucose. I break down big proteins into small amino acids because you need energy. That was the story of the cortex, but what's the story of the medulla? The medulla secretes the catecholamines, which are epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine also known as adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine. How did this happen? Sing with me. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa dopamine, noradrenaline, adrenaline. Norepinephrine, epinephrine will raise your blood pressure, your heart rate, your stroke volume to help you run from a tiger. Remember, this is the sympathetic nervous system fight flight. Pause and review. What's the difference between endorphin and opiates like morphine and codeine? Endorphin is endogenous, it's natural. Your body makes it naturally. You have it, I have it, everyone has it before going to the hospital without going to any doctor. Endorphin is your natural endogenous intrinsic painkiller. Do we have a pharmaceutical equivalent to this? Yes, the morphines, the codeines, all the opiates. These are exogenous painkillers. What's the difference between diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus? All right, the word diabetes means urine. Insipidus means tasteless. Urine, mellitus means sweet. Why is my urine tasteless? Because you have ADH deficiency, or maybe the receptor is not responding to ADH. And when you do not have ADH, antidiuretic hormone, you cannot 
retain fluid in your body. When you lack the antidiuretic, you are diuretic. You're losing lots of fluid in the urine, making your urine very dilute and tasteless. But diabetes mellitus is different. You lack insulin. Oh, I cannot bring my sugar into the cell. Sugar is left free to float in the blood. Eventually, it reaches the urine. If I have too much sugar in my urine, my urine will be so sweet. Hey, medicosis, did doctors actually used to taste the urine to make the diagnosis? Yes, indeed. Back in the good old days, which were not so good. Growth hormone. If you have too little growth hormone, you are dwarf. We call this dwarfism. If you have too much, well, it depends. If it happened when you were a child, you'll be giant. Gigantism. But if this happened after you have reached adulthood and closed your epiphyses, it will cause acromegaly. What does the word acro mean? Extremities. Your bones will get thicker. Tell me about thyroid hormone. Too little thyroid hormone, you have hypothyroidism. Congenital hypothyroidism was formerly known as cretinism. Since thyroid hormone is important for metabolism, brain development, etc., these babies are born with low IQ, poor brain development, intellectual disability, developmental delay, etc. On the other hand, if you have too much thyroid, well, your body is working like crazy. The stove, your body is on fire. Too much metabolism, too much diarrhea, too much weight loss, too much heart rate, etc. Please pause and review. Otherwise, there is no hope for you. If you like this video, I have a renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course. And we will continue the next video. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website and download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.